morning. Guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the wonderful The Arsenio ZSL Podcast, man. So grateful to be back. And today we're going to be diving into the second part of this a wonderful two-part series. Now, remember in the previous podcast, if you hadn't already heard, we had some problems. We had some morale problems at this specific workplace. And again, there was a lot of uh, blaming. You know, the refusal to listen, uh, making threats, uh, you know, and, and just becoming abusive in general. And so when we look at this and we think of different things that it can actually motivate your team, listen, there's internal motivation. Well, there's external and internal. External only lasts for so long. See, because people support what they create. And if for whatever reason, they feel like they are just a number in a company. Nothing will ever change. You could try giving them bonuses. You could try giving them extra money. I remember there was a guy by the name of Steve uh, who is now working part-time at the same place where he actually quit just a few years ago. And the boss who found out that he's quitting, he's like, hey, I can give you a little extra money. And it was like, uh, no, it's not that it's, you know, it's simply the fact that, well, I don't even know what the fact was to be honest with you, because if I were him, I would be look, working towards something far bigger than just, you know, making just a couple of dollars here and there. You know what I mean? Which technically I actually do at the same tutorial, but I'm doing so many bigger things outside, especially things like this, right? Now, if we look at this incentives, bonuses, I feel like so many people have become attached to these external things and oh you know I, I hope i get the bonus and with that bonus what are you going to be able to do to create a better future financially this is one of the biggest errors that my mom made back in the early 2000s because she would get significant amounts of income tax checks back in the early 2000s because she had four kids but she wasn't financially educated so instead of you know, probably, you know, invest in just at least a hundred of that, a hundred dollars of that, which would only be like 2% of that into stocks, she would have been potentially a millionaire right now, but she wasn't financially educated. We only knew how to spend, not save, spend, not multiply. And so when I started saving, my family looked at me as being someone of selfish because I was literally saving my own money rather than spending. They didn't understand the art of saving. I wasn't multiplying. I was just saving, saving for a bigger dream. And sure enough, that bigger dream got me to Australia, here to Thailand and so many other places. So going back to the entire workplace scenario and how managers and bosses use external things to help, you know, help individuals like P for P paying for performance. I'm not exactly sure if this is something that uh, happens in your workplace or happens in your life, but, you know, paying based on performance, I mean, I would have to be paid a hell of a lot, right? And so, again, there are a lot of things that just do, that, that actually motivate both internally and externally, and that's what I'm going to read you in this article right here. So here we go. The carrot approach, motivating your team. The carrot approach, employees, incentives such as higher salary, bonuses, or fringe benefits like free health care. Great if you can afford it. And the stick approach imposes schedules, deadlines, and perhaps the threat of dismissal if targets are not met on time. A sure way to become unpopular. See, if anyone had threatened me or threatened taking away my money, I would walk out of that place in two seconds. You will never, ever threaten me. And uh, it's probably why, you know, the relationship at this training company that I uh, that I'm getting ready to finish up right now had gone sour because I'm like, listen, you failed not only this time, but 12 other times, more than a dozen. I never called you out. You want me to wait here an additional 45 minutes in sweltering heat and disgusted pollution to get to class on time without breakfast to coach. No, you failed pushing classes to next week. And guess what? That literally, I knew that that was going to destroy the relationship with that company. And I was totally okay with that. Now, did I know that it was going to linger into three other relationships and three other personal relationships and three other clients that no longer want to learn with me? No, but I am not surprised whatsoever. 
But in the heart of all this craziness, you're not going to be able to motivate me with money. If you were to come to me towards the end of the course and say, hey, Arsenio, you know what? I would really love, uh, you know, uh, a long-term contract. I'm going to say, no, I'm going to have to respectfully decline. Thank you, though. And they're probably going to wonder why. And I'm going to be like, well, you showed me your true colors back in January. You've been lost. Everyone has been lost. You've shown me zero support. Not only that, it's not only you, but it's the fact that your employees who I'm coaching, they give me nothing back. Rudeness, standoffish, the, the lack of care, the lack of wanting to get better. This is all part of why this company and why you are, you know, why this place is the way it is. And I don't want to be around that. You know, and so again, not, they didn't threaten me with dismissal, but they didn't. But she didn't impose the schedule. Oh, could you have everything to us by Sunday? Because uh, in, in order to da, 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 like, like after I told her, she hurry up and sent me an email to try to get back at me. And I'm like, that is a sure way for me to never come back here. You're already on my bad side. And she has not shown her face for more than six weeks. Her, the lady she lives with, I haven't taught her in the same amount of time. The other one who I would teach, she probably got the group think is happening. I'm like, cool. I know exactly who you guys are. So at the last day, I'm going to give you all the certificates. We do not have to take photos. I'm going to give you all the course reports, which are going to be damned for a lot of people. And then from there, you will be blocked. I will send you that thank you email for everything. And you'll never hear from me again. <laughs> you know, I just like, do not treat me as a number. Now, let's look at this. But the real problem is that both the carrot and stick are extrinsic motivators, right? External punishments and rewards designed to make us work harder. And in most office environments, these are simply no longer effective. This is not the 1980s. And in this best-selling book, Dry, Dan Pink explains that while people in dull routine jobs may improve their performance for more pay, People in jobs that demand creativity and initiative actually find such incentives stressful and end up performing worse. What quote unquote knowledge workers like these need, you know, like, like these need intrinsic motivation, the freedom to make their own decisions. People support what they make, right? Or people support what they create. A feeling of mastery in the skills they use and a sense of belonging to something bigger than themselves to which they can make a positive contribution. So what can managers do to provide their people with the intrinsic motivation to improve their performance? Well, again, going to another guy by the name of Dan Ariely, he says that they need to stop having a market relationship with their staff. I pay you to work hard for me. No, motherfucker. I am not a number. Don't you ever stick your finger in your face and say, you do as I say, you work hard for me, you do that. I will walk the hell, I am not a number. And I am very grateful that I am in the last stage of my life uh, in terms of work, whereas I'm working for someone and then I won't have to work for anyone else just but myself, you know? And it's such a beautiful thing, you know, even, you know, like I had, you guys probably have already heard that, you know, I'm creating, uh, a website that, uh, you know, I'll be able to market and people will be able to see my prices and the things I do and everything. And I'm so grateful for all of that. Um, and at the same time, there are so many things that, you know, being able to work for myself is just fantastic. And I'm even, and the reason why, although I get paid little at this tutorial center, the freedom to do whatever I want is what matters most. Hey, Arsenio. Are you free Tuesday? No. Okay. In other jobs? Or city, are you free Tuesday? Uh, no. No, but you work for us. You need to, oh, maybe you should consider working part-time. This is what the British fool from five years ago had said to me. And this is what I knew that it was going to continue on a down slump. Now, what you need to do, you need to begin to develop a social relationship with your employees. Meaning I value the contribution you make. So you might think a thousand dollar bonus would be more motivated than a small thank you present and a pat on the back from the boss, but you'd be wrong. In fact, Ariely claims that if a working relationship is strong, paying for performance can actually destroy it. 
not strengthen it. Imagine he says offering to pay your mother-in-law for a beautiful meal she cooked for you. She never speaks to you again. In the workplace, two, good social relationships need to be sustained and you can't put a price on them. That little thank you, that little thank you for this and that, it's everything in the world. I remember I never got a thank you for all the IELTS classes that I had taught. They literally gave the credit to other teachers, you know, five years ago. I remember one time, Pun, uh, was a teacher, uh, a student I taught a very long time ago. Uh, he got into Thammasai University, which is like the number one, number two out here in Thailand. And I remember the, 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 the teacher who had threatened me so many times, it was so hard for him to say, oh, just to let you know, Pun got in. Very good. Like, it, it was almost as if he was giving himself credit. And I was like, yeah. I was, I was looking at him. I was like, please, shove that bullshit ass. But shove that shit right up your ass. He was out. He was as if he was saying it, but he wasn't even congratulating me or thanking me. It was so funny. You know, I remember I talked to him and I was like, oh, Pun's going to go in and rock this interview. He's like, yeah, but he's not really sure what type of engineer he would like to become. You're acting as if you are forcing an 18 year old kid to choose a career before he is legally able to buy a beer. Oh, he's not sure what solar engineer or this engineer that. Bro, shut the hell up. I didn't know what I was doing when I went to college and I threw away a lot I would love and I got stuck in loans. Until finally I said, man, fuck this, man. Let me just do some communication classes, presentation, psychology, all that bullshit. I mean, no one knows what to do when they go to college. The majority of the people, they're being forced to go to college. Majority of the people, they are being forced. And this is just like work, being forced into routine, forced into doing something they don't want to do. And then when they actually do achieve something, oh, here's a bonus, but never a thank you. That's a sure way to make enemies. And that's how high turnover happens. See, if you hadn't already heard on the Corporate Finance Podcast, I talked to you guys about, okay, like high turnover. Why does it happen? You know why? Because of threats, because of that, you know, uh, looking at employees as a number. You never want to look at anyone as a number. And the moment you do is the moment you lose trust over employees. The amount of that, that atmosphere that I used to be in, and even in 2018, 19, at the job I'm working at right now, until I put my foot down and say, listen, I'm going for something way, way bigger right now. I'm aiming at something way bigger than what, like, like, you know, it, it, you can't force me to do anything. And if you don't understand what my contract is, contact the main guy here. And so I make it very apparent. Listen, I'm not going to do this. I'm free this day, this day. Why, why, why? There's no why. There's, you have no authority to ask me why. It just is like oxygen. Oxygen just is. So in saying that, when I see my students from all over the world come to me and say, oh my God, I got this. Oh my God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That was all because of me. I had I pat myself on the back. And at some time, yes, I am going to have a team. Yes, I'm getting a, a developer to develop my website right now. And he's going to be part of my team in terms of, you know, editing things on my website and something that's routine and whatnot. Yes, that's always going to happen. At the same time, I'm just so unbelievably grateful that I am able to take this to the next level, to be able to show my skills and inspire my you know, it, not, not employees inspire my team to achieve greatness in their own right. So in saying that, I was going to do the video. The video is a little bit longer, but we're going to be getting into this in the second part with the video in terms of that same video we listened to in this previous podcast. The next one is going to be a complete turnaround. So in saying that, people, thank you so much for tuning in to another wonderful ESL podcast. I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. I'm your host, as always, over and out.